Hi, my name is Steve Jurch, and I'm the Director of Massage Therapy for the Women's Tennis Association, and I teach continuing education through Jurch Performance Education. And I'm here at Oak Works today working with Nate, and I wanted to pass along some sports massage techniques that I've utilized over my career. And I'm working today on a Oak Works Boss Table, which is a fantastic table, especially if you work with um, athletes. And so the first thing we want to talk about are contusions and how we can utilize massage therapy to improve the rate of healing for a contusion. And so if you recall, contusions are uh, caused by a blunt trauma to the soft tissue, which causes damage. And it, it essentially creates a hematoma, which is um, basically a blood clot within the muscle tissue. And depending on the severity, you can either get a um, intramuscular hematoma, which isn't quite as severe, or you can get an intermuscular hematoma, which is a little bit worse, creates a larger area of injury, and uh, it just uh, creates more damage to the tissue. And so some of the characteristics of a contusion would be uh, pain, swelling, loss of function, uh, loss of range of motion, and some bruising. And so what, when we work with contusions, what we want to apply are three strategies, and that's going to correspond to the different phases of healing. And so the first thing we're going to do is treat the contusion in the acute phase, which the primary objective is to reduce the size of the injury and the amount of inflammation. And how inflammation works is when you have the initial injury, you have swelling, tissue fluid, um, white blood cells come into the area to start the healing process. And that's a good thing. The problem is, is if you leave that swelling uncontained, it will just expand and create a larger area of injury. And so one of the best ways to do that initially is through ice and compression. And so what I've done here is I've uh, represented the area of contusion with this black dot. And so you see we have an ice pack on our model, Nate here, who has graciously volunteered himself today. And so you would initially place ice on the area for 20 minutes out of every hour, and you would repeat that several times per day. Once um, the ice is off the area, so you have it on for 20 minutes, you can apply a compression wrap. And so what we're gonna do is have, Nate, why don't you just sit up and just swing your legs around the side here. And just hold the shorts for me there. And so you can use a felt pad for compression. It doesn't necessarily have to be a certain thickness. Um, and you'll apply that. You want it to be two to three times the size of the area of injury. And all you're going to do is just place that pad right on top of the contusion. Can you hold that there for me for a second? All right, now you want to start the wrap a little bit below the actual injury. Straighten your leg just a hair. There we go. Okay. And you want to actually create a crisscross pattern. So you want to start at an upward angle. And then you're going to kind of come down at a downward angle. So we're going to go at an upward angle and then at a downward angle. So you create this crisscross pattern. And you want to stop the wrap just above the contusion. And you want to not necessarily use a whole amount, a whole large amount of tension on the wrap. It depends on what the client's tolerance level is and how severe the injury is. And so what we would do is we would leave this pad on in between our ice sessions. And as an acute injury, this may be a few days, it may be one day, it may be a week. So it just kind of depends on the severity. And if your client has uh, a lot of discomfort with this, they can do one of two things. They can either remove the wrap, put it on a bit looser, or they can take the pad out uh, and just use the wrap itself. So that's our first strategy is we're going to utilize ice and compression to minimize that area of injury. And then once we move to the next phase of healing, which is the proliferative phase, or where we start to lay down new tissue, we want to utilize Another strategy, thank you, which is to facilitate the reabsorption of all of those substances that come, came from the swelling as quickly as possible. Let's have you lay back down for me. All 
right. Now, when we said we wanted to minimize the area of minimize the area of swelling, we also talked about working in that acute phase. And typically you're told not to work on an acute injury for the first 24, 48, maybe even 72 hours. Now that's true in most cases, but what we want to take advantage of is the quicker we can get rid of that material, the faster they're going to heal. And so if you start to work on an injury and you actually uh, create a little bit more swelling or the swelling isn't necessarily under control, then we've then you still need to just revert back to just ice and compression, okay? And as we're moving through that transitional phase, what we can actually do is utilize ice to actually do the massage. So we get that nice cooling effect, but we also start to create uh, uh, environment for reabsorption. So we try to spread, actually spread that swelling out so it gets reabsorbed quicker. We want to create a larger surface area. So we can do that using ice. So we'll just, you all right? So we'll just use a little bit of ice, start to do some massage with it. Once it starts to cool down, we can work from the center out. So we want to spread that and create a large surface area. So we're just going to work from the center out. And as it starts to cool down, we can actually use the ice cup to create the massage stroke. And when we're doing this, we're actually spreading the, the creating more surface areas to facilitate that reabsorption, but we're also uh, cooling the area at the same time so we don't actually increase any swelling. Now for ice massage, you would only need to do this probably five to seven minutes at a time. And then so once we've done the massage with the ice while it's still cold, we can actually utilize some normal massage strokes. And once again, real light stuff, because what we're doing is we're taking advantage of being able to work early on the injury because it's, we've utilized ice. So we don't want to actually create more swelling. So we're just going to do some nice gentle strokes. We can work from the center out, increasing that surface area. Now at the same time, this, um, this phase, it could last one week, it could last three weeks, depending on the severity. So you could be doing this routine of ice massage, um, soft tissue work, and then ice again for a while until that contusion starts to get reabsorbed. Another thing that you can incorporate during this phase is just some gentle movement. So you can have the client just start to flex and extend their legs. So just bend your knee for me. Just do some slides on the table and then straight back down. And so what he's doing is he is also um, helping that contusion to get reabsorbed, but he's also, as that new scar tissue gets laid down, he's creating what we uh, commonly call a functional scar or helping that scar tissue to align with the, the um, muscle fiber direction. So do one more of those for me. So just some gentle active, and you can actually do passive as well if you wanted to, depending on your client's comfort level. So when we move from the proliferative phase or the intermediate phase into the um, remodeling phase or the last phase of healing, we want to start to create more of that functional scar. We want to remodel or make sure that that scar tissue isn't going to become um, too prolific. So we want to minimize the scarring. We want to make it as functional as possible. And the best way that I've found to do that is to utilize movement with our techniques. Okay, so. Um, we can also start in with some friction to begin. So we warmed up the area. And then we can use our cross fiber or multi-directional friction. So we find that nice contusion. And by this time, it's gotten to be that uh, more fibrous type of tissue. And we can apply friction, which is um, securing the skin and just moving the tissue underneath. We can go cross fiber. We can go multi-directional. And we're really trying to now 
make that muscle tissue as normal, normal as possible. So that's our third strategy. So we had minimize the area of injury, enhance reabsorption, and our last strategy is to normalize the tissue. Okay, so we can do our frictions, multi-directional and cross-fiber. At any phase during these, if, if a person is sore after this, it is not a bad idea to continue with the icing as well. So, um, to incorporate movement, what we want to do is take advantage of two phases of the muscle. We, of the muscle. So we want to take advantage of the contraction and the, and the lengthening. So what we're going to do, I'm going to have Nate scoot towards the edge of the table just this way. That's good. And so what we're going to do is incorporate some passive movement into some of our strokes. And I'm actually going to get this bolster out as well. And so I'm going to slide the person to the edge of the table and just hang their leg off the edge of the table. Okay. So what I can do is I can do passive movement. So he's just going to relax and I'm going to do all the work. All right. And when we extend his leg, the muscle is going to shorten. So we want to help that process and broaden that tissue out, break up that connective tissue and that scarring that's coming in there. And so as we extend his leg, I'm just going to broaden that muscle. Okay, so he's not doing anything. I'm doing all the work. Okay. So that's our passive broadening. If I wanted to be a little bit more uh, invasive and effective, what I can do is have him do active uh, movements while I do the massage stroke. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same stroke, but I'm going to have him slowly straighten his leg as I do it. Okay, so slowly straighten as I cross fiber and broaden the stroke. Okay, again. And you just want to make sure that you're getting a good timing. And you can work a broad surface, or I can actually be more specific directly over the contusion. Okay, and just relax for me. And the last technique we're going to talk about is probably the most. It's the most effective, but it's also the most invasive, and that's we're going to do some stripping along uh, the muscle fiber. So we can also do passive as well as active. And so the first what we're going to do is we're going to have his leg in an extended position, and as I flex his knee, I'm going to perform a stroke longitudinally up the muscle. Okay, so you just relax for me. And as I lengthen, I can do a stroke up the muscle. Okay. And then the last phase of this would be to have him do that uh, movement while I do the massage stroke. So, okay, and as he flexes, my thumbs keep going and back up and move as he flexes. And up. And good. Okay, and relax. And so once you get to this phase, um, we've created as normal a scar as possible. We've enhanced our reabsorption, and we've controlled the inflammation. And so you always want to use common sense when working with your clients. Stay within their comfort level. And this is an extremely valuable skill that you can add to your practice. I'd really like to thank Oakworks for putting these videos together. I'm very passionate about massage education, and I think these are great tools for therapists. I have some really interesting things on my website, and I'd love for you to check it out at www.jerchperformanceeducation.com. Thanks, and I hope to see you soon.